This is Archies in the Beltway, a look at national politics and the Arkansans influencing the discussions. I'm Alex Thomas, Washington correspondent for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, reporting from the nation's capital. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Archies in the Beltway for the week of December 24th, 2023. Trying to summarize this year in the U.S. House of Representatives with only one word is a challenge. When we asked Arkansas's four representatives to do such, their answers were not immediate. Oh, man. That's hard because uh, there's times when you would, you would use one word and other times when you would use the uh, antonym of that word. That's a very, very perceptive and good question. All four Republicans have served when the GOP controlled both congressional chambers and during sessions as members of the minority party. As Representative Rick Crawford of Jonesboro explains, being part of the minority is not difficult. When you're in the minority, all you have to really do is say no. That's easy. Being in the majority requires some you know, thoughtful deliberation and also recognizing that you can't have every single thing you want. Republicans knew they would win the House with a slim majority in the weeks after the November 2022 midterm elections. Republican leadership had a plan in the form of the Commitment to America, a legislative blueprint addressing issues such as permitting for energy projects and government spending. Yet it is the moment separate from public policy that captured headlines throughout the year. House Republicans accomplished some goals, but much of the attention during the year was drawn to specific moments, including the removal of Kevin McCarthy as Speaker. Going back to the best word to describe the year, here's what Crawford and Representatives Bruce Westerman and French Hill selected. It's hyphenated, so I don't know if it's one or two, but I would say topsy-turvy. Complicated? I will say mixed bag, which is hyphenated. Representative Steve Womack of Rogers, however, needed some additional words. I would say... Historically and hysterically, underwhelming. The year began with the House Republican Conference struggling to pick a speaker. It took 15 rounds of votes for McCarthy to win the gavel, only for him to lose the position nine months later. Arkansas's House delegates played parts in McCarthy's speakership. Hill and Westerman gave floor speeches in favor of McCarthy back in January, with Westerman delivering the final remarks before McCarthy won the gavel. In October, it was Womack who presided over the House, during the historic motion to vacate vote to remove McCarthy. It was only after the fact, maybe a day or two later, that it kind of sank into me that I had just presided over one of the more historic moments in the history of the House. I mean, it's never happened before. Hard-right Republicans successfully led the motion in the wake of McCarthy needing Democrat support in September on a short-term funding measure avoiding a government shutdown. House Democrats opted not to save McCarthy. Crawford says allowing the motion to vacate set the wrong tone in handling disagreements. Why are you basing a, you know, a, 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 a really huge action here on a personal grievance? I mean, can we not be adults enough to settle our personal grievances in a more appropriate manner, preferably behind closed doors in ways that don't impact the the functioning of this body. The House was brought to a standstill for three weeks as Republicans struggled to unify around a new speaker, eventually picking Mike Johnson of Louisiana. Johnson faces similar dynamics to McCarthy in trying to operate with a slim and diverse Republican majority. Westerman acknowledges the difficult situation. You play with the cards you're dealt, and you get up every day and look at the playing field, focus on your strategy in your direction and do what you can. As for McCarthy, he's leaving Congress before the end of his term. His resignation will take effect on New Year's Eve. Hill has formed a friendship with McCarthy during their shared time in Washington. He wasn't caught off guard by the news. After his loss of the speakership, I knew he was giving strong consideration on whether he would serve out his term or leave the House uh, early and that it was weighing on him. The House will have two vacancies to begin the new year. McCarthy's seat and an opening created when the chamber voted earlier this month to expel indicted New York Republican George Santos. Congress as a whole did not have much success in passing legislation. Only 27 bills became law thanks in part to the divided government. Republicans control the House and Democrats run the Senate. Westerman sees this divide through an optimistic lens, saying it has forced Democrats to work with Republicans on some issues, securing some GOP priorities in the process. One example is the debt ceiling agreement, which included language to expedite the permitting process for energy projects. 
Westerman helped lead the effort in the House thanks to his role as chairman of the House Natural Resources Committee. What you have to look at when you're the majority party in one half of one branch of the federal government, there's great success in the things that didn't happen. Speaking of the debt ceiling, it is related to one other area of compromise, that is spending. During the summer, President Joe Biden and McCarthy reached terms on raising the debt ceiling with caps on discretionary spending levels. Republicans and Democrats have had to work together twice to avoid government shutdowns, approving enough funding to get Congress through the calendar year and gift themselves enough time to pass annual appropriation bills rather than relying on a sweeping end-of-the-year omnibus. Hill says Congress needs to return to considering budgets. This is important. You know, this is reconnecting with muscle memory of how the budget process is supposed to work. But with these moves are related challenges in the new year. Congress faces two deadlines, January 19th and February 2nd, to pass appropriations bills, the result of that November agreement avoiding a government shutdown. There are also the issues of military aid for Ukraine and Israel and the lack of compromise addressing security at the U.S.-Mexico border. Crawford expressing his awareness about the full plate of work. We've got a lot, a lot of stuff to try to jam into, uh, I guess uh, you might say, 50 pounds of junk into a 10-pound bag. But we're going to be able to do it. Senators in the White House have held talks about possible legislation when it comes to border security. The Senate and House will be back on Capitol Hill during the week of January 8th. And that'll do it for this edition of Arkies in the Beltway for the week of December 24th, 2023. A programming note, we are taking some time off for the holidays, but we shall return in the new year. In the meantime, you can stay up to date with all news involving Arkansas at ArkansasOnline.com. You can get in touch with me on social media. My handle is at Alex House Thomas. I'm Alex Thomas. Thanks for listening. And I look forward to connecting with you all in 2024.